This video is sponsored by Velos Yacht Insurance. It's nice to know Taylor is in the best possible hands as we sail around the world. Good morning and welcome back to sunny Aruba. We are in the boatyard here, still cracking away at our job list, our very long job list. But this week we have something really exciting planned. We have three, wait, no two, no, definitely three massive jobs planned, um, which will make a world of difference when we're out there crossing oceans. So as you can all remember, back on the Atlantic, down in this cabin actually. Um, there'd be literally just 15 knots of wind and yet every kind of 10 minutes we'd hear a, a <laughs> and it would sound like the boat was going to take off. And I'd rush out of this hatch and say, Zach, you need to reef, we're going like 15 knots. And he'd, no, 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 it's fine. It's just a bit of a bigger wave. So we currently have a very strange ticking noise coming from our shaft slash gearbox. So, put a big touch on. Yeah, a lot of you commented on it saying, just put your gearbox in reverse. And unfortunately our gearbox is a hydraulic gearbox, meaning that we cannot do that. So we could put a shaft brake on it, um, but it would, the drag it would create at that point because we had pretty big prop it was just not really worth it so uh, we left it spinning and that was also the recommendation in the gearbox manual wasn't it so mm -hmm. yeah we just did what that said and it's been great but we don't want to do that any longer as you all know we also got stuck on a lobster pot last year and it was not a great experience and would really rather not have that happen again so we have just had a delivery yesterday of a propeller and we thought while we're at it we're just going to kind of tackle all the under the water line so we're going to do the prop we're going to replace the cutlass bearing and we're going to get rid of our horrible grease packer once and for all um, because yeah it's just gross and it's leaking at this point there's grease everywhere and yeah anyway I'm gonna drink my coffee wake up and crack on with an exciting week of boat work before we could do anything, it was time to get our old prop off. It was definitely looking a bit sorry for itself after spinning for the last five and a half thousand miles and with years of anti-fouling flaking off it, it was bound to put up a bit of a fight. There we go. With that off, it's time to head up and start the next, more greasy task. I'm currently in our engine room, so this is what it looks like in here. All great, apart from this thing down here. This is a uh, grease packer that's meant to keep it pretty much watertight. It does let a few drips in like it's meant to, but this thing's getting quite old. It's really rusted everywhere and we're just not totally confident in its ability to stop water getting through prop anymore and i think it's an original of the boat on a lot of boats these are still great and people still use them i'm not trying to bash them because i think if this was newer it'd be still fine we'd just keep it but it's old and we would love to have a completely dry bilge so i'm gonna take this all off i'm gonna take the shaft out as well um but yeah i'm gonna give this a go taking this all apart which can be interesting and then later on today I'm hopefully going to take out all the actual pack here. So this is where the grease is. And this is the little nut here, which we tighten to pack more grease into here to keep it waterproof. But as you can see, there's even grease coming through the pipe here because it's so corroded now. Put this 
clamp on, so when he turns the prop shaft, oh, turn the other way. You can see whether it's stuck in there. Okay, so that's really on there. So what Zach's gonna do is he, we've just sprayed it in WD-40 and he's gonna go out and give it another whack and see if it comes back out. These things always grow arms and legs. <laughs> started there so it is going now I'm just going to take apart the stuffing box here and just seeing if anything's getting caught in there I don't think it is um, because the whole thing just slides in and out of there so I'm fairly sure that's not the issue I'm fairly sure it's just the coupling here but we've put a low WD-40 in it just in case it's rusted a bit in there and is getting stuck on something but fingers crossed whilst Zach is getting grubby in the engine room I wanted to take a second to chat about Velos Yacht Insurance I'm not sure if we've spoken about it on here before but we really struggled getting around the world cover for Tailey and speaking to other cruisers, it's clear we weren't the only ones. However, after lots of research and recommendations, we found Velos, who offered us round the world cover for all eventualities so we could forget about the small print and focus on the wicked journey ahead of us. We were using them long before we teamed up, so we can genuinely recommend checking them out. The link is in our description if you're interested. Oh, finally, it is off. Right, now that the grease pack is off, I should be able to just pull this whole thing off so I can just make sure that it's not actually stopping the shaft from getting out. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> Look at that. It's all off. To slide this whole system out, we had no choice but to try and get the shaft out more. Progress has been made. That is the bolt hole. Which is really good. And you can see the line where it initially was. It started there, I think there or there. So it's already out quite far. Look at how close that's getting now. I don't know if you can see in there, but if I shine a light here, the prop shaft is up to there. So it's almost there now, the shaft, and there's this little copper insert, which I can actually, I think, yeah, get out. I wonder when the last time that was out was. Yeah, it's out. It's out. I don't know if you see that. Okay, so yesterday we had a fairly successful day, but had a few issues. For some reason, the old grease packer here is getting caught on the shaft. I'm not 100% sure why, so I'm going to try and take the grease packer apart because there's threads here, but it's a bit corroded on the inside of there, so that section is actually just stuck on there but i put some wd-40 on it yesterday so i'm going to give it another go and see if i can get those apart and see if i can twist it off the shaft because we need to get that off uh, to get the new one on obviously and i need a bit more of a gap than that to get the new one on so if i can get the shaft about here i think that'd be good enough oh i've done it <sighs> both hands and a foot to get it done done I just need to unscrew this now and then loosen off the actual base here so these nuts are actually coming off e easily now. So that's not the issue. Of course, this last bit wasn't gonna play ball. So let's use this incredibly pint-sized blowtorch to try and get it moving. Scrap that, I'm cutting it off. I'm just gonna do a line all the way along there. Yep. And then um, I'm gonna leave the last bit and see if I can just crack it open. The whole thing's literally cracked on this side. Really? What's oh, it should... stuck on? I think that'll go now, that'll slide off. Whoa! Good work. Okay, well that took, I think, pretty much 
24 hours, a bit longer than we expected, but that's like any boat job, but it's now done. And Zach's having a lot of fun just poking in and out. <laughs> there is still a vibration from it, which means it's just tight, but I don't think that's a bad thing. And yeah, it's kind of a crazy feeling. We have no prop on our boat. It's definitely the biggest job we've done. Yeah, definitely the biggest job we've done. <laughs> But it's going to be really rewarding when we don't have all the grease flying out and drips of salt water coming into our bilge and yeah. This is step one for project dry bilge. <laughs> Zach, you waited a long time to do this. Yeah, I hate this thing. But we finally got it all out after some angle grinding and some hammering, blood, some sweat heat. and tears. <laughs> you look like you've been up a chimney. It's all out. I feel disgusting. No more grease down there. Yeah. If you open up the bug net, I'll chuck this over the side. Yeah. Any last words? No. <laughs> nice one. I would give you a high five, but you're gross. Disgusting. <laughs> Once that was off Taylor, it was time to clean this grease up. Once and for all, before installing our shiny new one. So we've done a lot of research and we settled on getting a LAS drop, which is in here at the moment. I'll show you guys exactly what a LAS drop dripless shaft seal is. This is the Gen 2 one. It looks a little bit better than our old one, doesn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> but this is the equivalent of the fabric or the tube that was on it. So where our prop goes through, goes down out of the boat there. And then we've got our stern tube, which gets clamped onto this like that. And then we've got this, which is a spring loaded bit of stainless steel. This sits on this carbon ring here and that makes the seal. So this bit spins with the prop and that stays stationary. So that there is what makes the seal. Nice. Quite simple, yeah? Yeah. They're really easy to install these things as well. All you need is to obviously remove the shaft a little bit and pull that out, which we've done already. And you also need just three things, nice. which should be quite easy to install. Should we just get it done? Yeah, sure. I'm really excited about this. We've been talking about replacing this for ages and Operation Dry Bilge is fully underway now. Yeah. All right, before we do anything else, we need to make sure that the uh, shaft is super clean. So I've got some 600 grit sandpaper here that I'm just gonna go over and make sure it's completely smooth before we do this because it will give the shaft here a much longer life if it is completely clean. Right, I've just installed the hose clamps. They are all on our stern tube now, if you can see down there. Got two on there. What I need to do now is put the other unit over here. And it's an interesting way of doing this. You need to use a little starter plug they've got in there before sliding it on just to keep the seals inside the assembly fine. Apparently the best thing to do is lubricate this up with some fairy liquid or some soap. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on just to make this slide over a bit easier. So that. All right, that's on. The shaft is back on, all the couplers reattached, which is really nice. What I need to do now is slide this down to there just so it's touching like that and then I'm going to draw a line around here and I need to depress the spring in there by seven millimeters and then tighten these allen key bolts on here Now that's all installed, we need to look at these little bits on top of here, which are for water supply. As Taylor's not the fastest thing in the world, 
we don't need to add water supply to this so if the boat speed is typically over 10 knots you need to tee this off onto the engine uh, water intake supply but there's no worry of us really ever doing those kind of speeds so all we need to do is um, cap one of them with a cap that's provided and then the other hose just needs to be run above the water line as a vent for air This is all pretty much done now. The hose is all attached, but it's looking so much better than the other one was. It's just tidy, neat. I'm hoping it's gonna work as well, but I'm sure it will. The reviews on these things are brilliant. So yeah, we'll see. It goes down there, follows up here, up here, up here, da 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 da, up here, along here, does a little twirl there, and then, goes to there which is the last drop vent line and that here right where the torch is shining is the breather for the pump so bilge pump. bilge pump here so that those two seacocks are at the water line level and that is above so you can take that off and give me a lovely high five that's high five another big one we are on a roll so it's time to tackle the cutlass bearing However, after digging the filler out of the P bracket and finding no grub screws, and evidence of a previous owner also struggling to get it out, we called in the yard pros. You think you'll be able to get it off? 100%. Woo! 100%. Yeah, no that's problem. great news. Okay. No problem. 100% I remove it for you. 100%. No if and about. <laughs> okay, but it doesn't have screws in it, no? No, it doesn't. I've looked everywhere. That's what I tell him is whether you put one on it. When I remove the bearing so you have more space to tap the hole. Yeah to put a screw on too. That's easy enough to do it. Yeah, awesome. We'll right, get cheers, actually. In this long thing that comes down from the hull, also known as a P-bracket, there sits a six inch bearing which helps support the prop shaft. You're meant to replace these about every 10 years, but with no evidence from when it was last done and a little bit of play, we wanted to play it safe and swap it out. As you saw, without screws in place, it was simply stuck in there. So these guys are over their hydraulic press and it's time to force it out. I have no chance of getting that out. Phew! <laughs> show me the inside. They have got the old cutlass bearing out. They've got two grub screws in there. The guys have just threaded it as well. And I think they've just gone to lunch, but hopefully when they're back, they're gonna push it in, put the grub screws in. And then we just got to tidy it up, fill out um, a bit on the P bracket, anti foul it. Some and random holes. That'll be done, yeah. Some thickened epoxy and a good sand later, and it was time for our most exciting install yet. This morning we are installing our shiny new beautiful it is propeller. stunning look at that so we've gone with the brunton's folding propeller on the atlantic you could all hear the <gasps> sound of our prop spinning and obviously you know back in europe we got stuck on a crab pot that was an awful moment and we just decided that for efficiency safety Speed. reliability comfort all of these options we were going to go for a folding prop um yeah we've gone for a brunton's which is a british made um, super high quality and beautiful as you can see. Look at that piece of engineering. We are so excited to get this onto Taylor. We were just saying that we think it's one of the most beautiful things we've ever bought. It is the most beautiful thing we bought for the boat. For yeah, sure. the engineering in it is just wicked. The whole thing is stunning. At the moment, or well, we used to have a fixed blade prop mm -hmm. on there, which is constantly out like that. Hopefully this will reduce the chance of us getting stuck on lines or anything like that in the future. And when we're sailing, it should be quieter and we should be a little bit faster as well, so. Let's yeah. install it! We've been so excited, you have no idea. The prop comes with some instructions. There's also a video online. We've basically got to take apart most of it and then fit the this bottom unit here. Just slides on, this screws on, and then we put everything back together. And it's quite, I think it's quite simple. We've got some uh, thread locker stuff as well for the um, threads in here because you've got to tighten all these in properly mm -hmm. and really well. And yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. We aren't kidding when we say we've dreamt of this moment from when we first brought Taylor. However, we always wanted to sail her a fair way before making any upgrades like this, to be sure they were really needed. Needless to say, 
when we found out that we could have saved three days on Atlantic crossing with a Verifold prop, we were as convinced as ever to make the switch before our next ocean crossing. Okay, that blade's gonna be loose now. So keep holding those other two. Mm -hmm. Maybe, right. maybe down is easier. Should we put it down? Should we put them down and see if it comes out easier then? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. It's out. There you go. Okay. Wow, that's beautiful. You got that one? Mm -hmm. How far in? Keep going, all the way. Yeah. Beautiful, look at that. really kind neighbour on a wicked 57 foot steel boat just lent us a torque wrench um, however we just have to do some conversions because it's what measurement is it in foot pounds foot pounds rather than nm which is newton meters is that right yeah oh it, cool it's a funny wrench because there's foot pounds which kind of makes sense because it's both imperial units of measurement and then there's meters pounds which is metric and imperial because <laughs> meters is obviously metric yeah. and pounds is imperial so it's funny they've got like a combination com combined but we need newton meters there's so many different ways to measure it but we've done the conversions so So I'm going to try and aim around the 50 mark on here, which is in between the 40 and 60 there. Yeah, nice. I'm just adding some thread locker to the inside of the nut, um, and they want you to do this on all, all of all the screws and nuts, just to lock it in tight. That's going to be an issue in a bit, but that's fine, maybe. Really. So we've had a little delay. What was that delay because of? We needed to get a torque wrench. We had one this morning. We had one this morning, but it didn't fit these uh, Allen key bits. And so now we've got one of these, which the mechanic in the yard is very nice to lend me. I need to go and give it back to her in a minute. Um, but yeah, we've actually got a torque wrench. Nice, let's do it. Finish it off. Time to get greasy. Yeah. <laughs> so what did it say? The, the bearing parts of the hub. So am I just greasing all in here? Basically? Yeah, grease all in there. Everything where it's going to be moving. So all of these bits so along here. And, that bit, just and then when we put the blades in, it'll be the actual like uh, these bits as well. But yeah, it's good. Yeah. Get her all greasy. And if you can as well, I think each hole is yeah, good. Yeah, for sure. And how often do we need to do this? Just every time it's main, like so. Every time it's out. And then all the sides and inside as well. Mm -hmm. Like good greasy action. Mm hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's good. Nice. Okay. Beautiful. You could grab a your blade. Yeah, we'll have it like that, yeah? Yep, yeah, sounds good. Lovely. Thanks, Preach. It's me. I line the blades with the flooring and push the timber pins into the hub, ensuring that all three blades are correctly aligned. 
Are they correctly aligned? Yeah. As you can see, the blades are quite a different shape to our old prop. Is it on 15 newton meters? Yes. Yeah, so it clicks when it. Yeah. That's okay. Next one? Yeah. This is because they're designed to neatly tuck behind the hub when yeah. folded up, reducing the drag. I guess these pins stop those other pins from coming out. Additionally, it has a 15% reduction in pitch towards blade tips to help reduce noise and vibration, all of which will make our passages a lot more comfortable. You got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Wow, it looks amazing. Woo! Right on. Wow, look at that, Zach. That's so nice. That'd be a bit better like that. <laughs> That's so nice. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, happy? Very nice, eh? Yeah, it fits perfectly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can get to throw out. No, I can't. Oh, nearly. <laughs> Favourite install yet. So nice. We can't wait to set sail so and nice. properly test it out. See you next week. Give me a high five.